talk about them from a different perspective. So, in our family, Tim was Uncle Tim. Uncle Tim to Kay and I, and Wyatt, and Lynn, and, and Sarah. And of course, I've known Tim for many years, and we've heard from, from uh, Andy and, and Kurt and Ron about all that he did in his professional life and that compassion and genuineness, uh, enthusiasm and energy uh, certainly carried over into his personal life as we knew him. Um, you know, we don't, we always would look forward to coming down and having dinner with David and Tim. We don't have a whole lot of fine restaurants up in Ellicott City. <laughs> And coming down to the exciting area of Washington, it was always a treat. And Wyatt and Lynn can, can, can attest to that. Always an exciting new place. Um, always lots of fun. But Tim, uh, certainly for the kids, was always very supportive of them. Excuse me. Always very supportive of them, and we certainly will miss him. That, that uh, it will remain in our hearts and memories forever. So let me, if I may, just, I shared with David a poem earlier in the week. It always gives me comfort, hope it does to you. Don't remember me with sadness, don't remember me with tears. Remember all the laughter we've shared throughout the years. Now I am contented that my life, it was worthwhile, knowing that I passed along the way, I made someone smile. When you're walking down the street and you've got me on your mind, I'm walking in your footsteps, only a half step behind. So please don't be unhappy. Just because I'm out of sight, remember that I'm with you each morning, noon and night. And God bless you. On the Zambezi River, do we just continue on? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> How do we just keep going? You decided on? to keep going. Yeah, and, and they voted that they would just keep going on. <laughs> well, it was, it was a good trip. <laughs> uh, Thanks, Arnie. So, Kathy first, and then Ron. Oh, we're going to do it. <laughs> and we're standing right. You're going to do it with us too, aren't you? And I go, no, we're not. <laughs> so we we watched them go. And, and the, the scary part was you don't you don't zip line all the way across to the end, you get down into the middle and you go like this over the river waiting for them to pull you back. Because you're crossing a border. Yeah, and then, and then we get to Machu Picchu one year and we're there and it's beautiful, but Kathy, what's the peak? The, the, I gotta look it up. I well, it's a hot, so you're all up there in this height, but then it's like. There's pictures of Tim looking over the valley well, I took when we were at the top. That's of, another but, thousand feet. Yeah, yeah, so it's like a pencil mountain. <laughs> Kathy was training to go to Kilimanjaro, Kilimanjaro and Tim said, I'll go up with you. Yeah. About an hour up and about an hour down. And Ron and I stayed and, and enjoyed those wonderful peaceful hours. Uh, <laughs> it, was the, it was the only time that. They were. They actually ran out of scoops out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we went to Sydney and went across the Sydney Bridge, out of the four four of us, because I'm a klutz, I was four, I was just mortified to go up. You know, I mean, they do a lot of safety things, steps and all, but I was mortified to do that, and I did really pretty well. You were? I didn't pee in my pants or anything. <laughs> Tim, after 28 years of friendship, it's impossible for me to convey my love for you with just a few words. I take some comfort today being here with all of you as we gather that I am one of the most remarkable men that I've ever met. My mother passed away just under a year ago, just under a year and a half ago, and it was 
no surprise with, with Tim and David were by my side supporting me through one of the most difficult times in my life. That level of concern is just one of the traits that personified Tim. He was there for us always, in both the happy and the sad times. Except for his birthday, because he would never share that. He'd always go out of town. It's the first time I realized how old he is. <laughs> <laughs> Some of my favorite memories include our vacations together, sharing a meal at one of our homes, dining out at the newest restaurant in town. No matter the location, the wine, conversation, and laughs all flowed freely. Another, another of my all-time favorites was knowing that while I was seated in the audience at the Fairfax Symphony, Tim was on stage worried that I would clap at the wrong time. <laughs> now, I know that's the last thing that was on his mind, but <laughs> you always say this is when With that segue to music, I want to share the lyrics of a popular jazz song written in some like whole quarter in 1944. And I looked up these facts because I knew Tim would want to know. It's called Every Time We Say Goodbye. Every time we say goodbye, I die a little. Every, every time we say goodbye, I wonder why a little. Why the gods above me, who must be in the know, think so a little of me, they allow you to go. When you're near, there's such an air of spring about it. I can hear a lark somewhere sing about it. There's no love song finer, but how strange the change from major to minor. Every time we say goodbye. My heart is full. My heart is full from Tim's enduring gift of friendship and for all the wonderful memories I will carry with me. I will carry him with me every day. Tim, I love you. Mr. Tim, David, thank you so very much. David uh, was such a close friend to 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 Tim before I even met David, and uh, I've leaned on David and Daniel a lot this week. Thank you, David. I love you, David. Thank you very much. <laughs> and it's an amazing over the top place that I have never been to. Um, so part of the experience is they'll pick you up in a launch downtown if you make reservations on time. <laughs> yeah. Are you sensing a Are you sensing a little bit of a, a trend? So um, the eighty nine dollar Uber ride all across the the <laughs> island of Nantucket uh, to the to the Wawa, right, David? Yeah, um, yeah. We we had an amazing dinner, an amazing experience watching the. The, the, the sunset um, you know, over over the island there and over the ocean and um, you know Tim was just an amazing amazing person and I think we're all going to miss him very much so, so Tim cheers so. here, here. And, and just to follow on that a little bit Kurt uh, so that was a conference that was uh, we were in Nantucket first and then Newport yeah we had to be yeah and so but we had uh, in Newport, we were at a hotel, but Kurt and Suzanne had gotten us a house. Uh, or did Ron get right. the house? Okay, and and here's another little interesting thing: when 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 Ron gets these places, you know, we're all in the we're all in the house, and then there's a separate house. Ron had his own house. Yeah, always the resident. You know, when, you, when you're when you're running the show, you get to show. So uh, that was the deal. I think we were there three nights and to cook. I mean, there were some nice restaurants and we did go to the Slowly. And the reason we went to the Lowly restaurant was because Tim said, I'm not cooking. And Tim's a great cook. He is. And Kathy cooked the first night and you all cooked the second night. And I think you might have even thought that Tim would cook and he, I'm not cooking. <laughs> Any stories to tell about Tim and David? I have to wonder like what we must have in common because I also went to the Fairfax Symphony Orchestra 
and Tim also gave me very clear <laughs> instructions <laughs> to his class. I thought of that because I was improving at the time. I learned two things that night. David taught me that when you go in, you bring two glasses of red wine with you, not one. <laughs> and you pretend that it's for the person next to you. This is my selfie, my selfie person. You have a certain number of people who are willing to take a selfie with you at any time. Usually when I take a selfie with Kurt, usually um, is not as compliant as Tim. Tim, I have selfies from all over, all over the country. I have selfies with Tim. And when Kurt travels, my usually my only my only question every time that he travels of a trip that I, because I have a busy job and we have two kids, like which trip to go on is, are Tim and David going on the trip? <laughs> if Tim and David are going, then I'll go with you. Uh, but the real story I would tell was uh, when Tim also uh, taught Kurt when my birthday was. And this was, uh, um, when you have young children, you don't always celebrate your birthday on the day your birthday is supposed to be. You don't think anything of it that your birthday is being celebrated on a different day because it's whatever works in the family schedule. And we were going to be in Boston on my birthday with Tim and David. And then David had a work engagement that took him away uh, on, on our birthday. David and I share the same birthday. And so David was no longer going to be there. So we're walking down the street in Boston. Um, we're walking, and, and this is usually how it looks. Tim and I are walking together, and Kurt's, you know, uh, catching up behind. Or if, if all four of us are there, it's usually Tim and Kurt locked in on work, and David and I are, are socializing behind. And Tim says, I have picked the perfect restaurant for your birthday. Now, Kurt has celebrated my birthday three days ago. We have young kids, but I think he celebrated my birthday then because we're gonna be away in Boston and you have the cake and the presents with the kids. And we're walking down the street and Kurt's like, stops. And he was like, Tim, it's not our birthday. And, uh, and, and Tim's like, no, today is her birthday. Today is David's birthday. I know when David's birthday is, today is the day. And, uh, and Kurt's like, no. I checked her driver's license last week. Today is not her birthday. Well, my birthday, my driver's license was issued on July 21st. <laughs> <laughs> but it really is, right, David, our birthday? So David, I have to oh, say, yes. Yes. it is now probably your job to tell Kurt when yes. my birthday is. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm pretty sure Tim took it on after, I was after that. So not alert. Yeah, not, not, not alert. Uh, so to Tim, which I know we all have beautiful stories, and to Lynn, Sarah, and Wyatt, I want to say like I have just heard your stories <laughs> since you were since you were young kids, uh, and I've just enjoyed so much getting to meet. Where, where is she? Had to leave. She had to leave early. Oh, I, was say, I don't see you, Sarah. I have just enjoyed so much <laughs> meeting you because we have heard every story and and moments along the way when they would prepare for your family to come for dinner. You know, getting to sort of see the preparation that it's just thrilling to meet all of you. Thank you. So, to Tim. To Tim. To Tim. Tim. And when you talk about the different trips, but um, the Fairfax Symphony for years would do a summer program in the Shenandoah Valley at Orkney Springs. And it was a music festival, and, um, and there was a uh, uh, all these cottages, very modest cottages, very nice, un unair conditioned. <laughs> and all the musicians would, would go up there and uh, did you? Did, I don't know if you all went up and, and it, they went up before the nights of the performances. I don't know if they went up the nights before the performances to rehearse, but they played softball and they they hung out on the on the porch of the cottages and uh, climbed the mountains and then climbed the mountains and remember. I, and I didn't go. These were all the musicians. I did go a couple years. We went to an old cemetery. And, and we walked through the cemetery, and, uh, and and I was there in the cottage where we just all drank and drank and drank. Uh, Greg and Ann were not married at that time. I don't think anyone in, in the group really was married. It was a very young group. And then, uh, then marriages come along the way, and children come along the way. And before all that, though, what we also did was an art, after the Fairfax Symphony, concert in, in Fairfax, all the musicians would get together at a restaurant, a very nice restaurant called Artie's, and um, Chris, now that Chris is the new, I say he's the new new conductor, he's been there for a while, but he comes and 
if there's a solo performance performer they come and so forth and so forth but because up people started to get married and children the crowd dwindled down to where it was Tim and I always Tim Wade but just just the last the last one or two performances Greg and Ann showed up and was there and I thank you for being there and uh, those were wonderful times at Orkney Springs I wish I had shared more in those with y'all in this room, um, I know Tim for about 10 years, so I'm, I'm on the bottom of the scale. You guys have known him much longer. So everything I'm going to say, uh, this is for you, David, um, is going to be obvious to the rest of you times three or more. Uh, and to you, I'm going to say everything you already know. Um, you all, uh, everyone here loves Tim for so many reasons, and I think it would be a challenge for anyone here to pick their favorite thing about Tim. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to pick my favorite thing about Tim. And my favorite thing about Tim, David, was how much he loved you. Um, I've never in my life met a couple more in love than you two. And um, I know you know this. But um, anytime I talk to people about Tim, um, you know, to my new wife, the first thing I always say is, you've never seen love like Tim and David. And all of you know that. Um, I go to dinner with David once a month, and they live together, and he works at the house. Headquarters is in the house. They just saw each other 10 minutes ago. And at 10 o'clock, David's going to go home to Tim. He's going to see him again. They'll have two or three text messages or phone calls during dinner every time. And I'm like, most couples, when they separate to go off with their friends to dinner or something, leave the phone away, but not these two. We're 30 minutes in, and David remembers something he saw on the news. And he can't wait. He needs to tell his best friend. He needs to tell Tim. It never bothered me once. And every time it happened, I was like, that's true love. You know, you're going to see him in two hours, but you can't wait to tell him this little thing you just remember. Or vice versa, Tim will call him. Um, so my favorite thing about Tim, and you all know this, uh, was how much he loved you, David. Uh, it was incredible. Um, I'm going to miss Tim. And um, so this is, this is to love and to Tim. And um, he and Tim Wade are the Tims in our family. And our youngest son, Michael, we have five sons. And our youngest is Michael Timothy, in honor of our Tims. But I'm smiling behind my mask watching this video because the trips that we took with Tim, David was not usually part of these, were far less uh, sophisticated. <laughs> Ours were usually comprised of skiing trips or beach trips when we had about 12 people crammed into a two bedroom condominium and lots of drinking involved. And, um, but um, always, Tim was that person who was dishing out the compliments and I think of all of my, I have only one regret in my relationship with Tim and it was a, a conversation that we had many times over the years and my husband Greg here is a fairly conservative guy and there were many times when I said, Tim, can't you just steal him away for a day and give him a makeover? And we never had it happen, but, <laughs> but I could choose the one person in the world to have it happen to be Tim Owens with my husband. but. I don't have a single bad memory of this guy. Yeah. I, he just, we played in the Fairfax Symphony with him. That was our, sorry, I forgot to leave that. I forgot to say that, but we've known him for 30 plus years. And um, he always would ask about our five children. What are they doing? Where are they going? You know, do, do you, he always would remember something about them. And I don't know how he did that because it was ever changing. But, um, I know that uh, Fairfax Symphony is an orchestra that I've played in since I moved to Virginia in 1989, and I would always, one of the first things I would do when I would sit down in my chair, we had rotating seating, and I would look to see where Tim's were. We always knew where he was because he was in the principal seat, but the rest of us <laughs> would rotate around, so I'd find Tim, or okay, the world is good because Tim's there, but um, so many, yeah. so many wonderful yeah. memories over the years. And, uh, a year ago for us um, marks the dinner party at Tim and David's house and 
Um, having five sons, I, was, I have been pretty involved in Boy Scouts, and this dinner party was right ahead of the Philmont. I don't know if you know about Philmont, but it's basically 12 days in the outdoors, um, without a shower, eating freeze-dried food for all of that time. And so this wonderful dinner party at Tim and David's house was right before all of that. And as I was leaving, I said, thank you. I will carry the memory of this party, in most particular, over the next two weeks as I'm eating my rice and beans. But um, to, Dave, to Tim and David, for a wonderful, wonderful memory. Uh, when I, we both moved here in August of 86, and, and Tim was 21 and I was 36. And we didn't meet until 1989. You know, there's no internet, no social media. And you would, there was a Washington Blade gay newspaper, and you'd post an ad in there to try to meet people. And, and then you'd go to the bars. And um, every gay is just like straight people and other people are looking for love. And uh, usually what they get at the, at the end of the evening is just a good time and uh, meet somebody and they move on. Kind of the joke was you, your little, uh, something on your nightstand would be loaded with little handwritten numbers of somebody that you never called back. <laughs> and uh, it was Saturday night, uh, May the 6th at 11.30 at the fraternity house, which I love because I was in a fraternity, so I'm going, well, I'm, I'm meeting somebody at the fraternity house here. And he comes up to me. And his, his story is that he's been trying to meet me and cruise me for six months, and I've ignored him. And I'm going, no, I didn't ignore you. I never saw you in here. You know? And uh, I had gone there a, a lot with another friend where we were just truly friends. But that became our anniversary night. So when we got married, I could, when we could, we, believe it or not, I asked him to move in with me two, two weeks later, and he did. And so we <coughs> held ourselves out as a couple. Uh, ever since then, we were under the same roof. Everybody in the apartment building, everybody, everybody knew except the Air Force. That, uh, <laughs> and I'm sure some of them suspected. Uh, <laughs> That uh, that uh, that I was uh, that I had maybe a friend or or whatever, and uh, we uh, same sex marriage came around in March of 2010 for DC, and we're sitting in the den, and I'm opening the paper and see that one one probably fault of ours of both him and I that maybe we could have corrected in the in, back in the years is to have been more of an activist activists in gay causes and activists in other causes and, and we didn't we did we followed a lot of things we believed in a lot of things but we didn't always take to the road and i looked over at tim and i said we can get married do you want to get married i didn't get down on my knees <laughs> i would that was the best proposal and he said sure and I said, well, our anniversary is May the 6th, and I'm not waiting until next year, so we have much to do. <laughs> and uh, it was, what do you do? Do you go down and just in front of a clerk? Uh, I didn't want to do that. Uh, a judge, I didn't uh, know any good, uh, I didn't have close relationships with the federal judges to even, to even think to ask a judge. And uh, I'm Episcopalian, and not a good Episcopalian, had to belong to a church. And I asked him if he would do that, and he agreed to that. And we got married at All Souls Church in, in Woodley Park. And because we had been together so long, it's, it's not like two gays, gay guys just got married or just met the year before. We weren't going to have a big wedding. But it, you know, I, we were in the church at 6 o'clock, and I asked Dave Bennett, uh, to be my best man, and Tim asked Tim Wade to be his best man, and so it was just the four of us. And some people, like his mother, <laughs> may have been offended that they weren't invited. And then the next night was a Thursday night, <coughs> excuse me, Thursday night, and then the next night we had a nice, nice reception at the Jefferson Hotel where Kay and Jonathan and the children and, and several other people are invited for a reception. And a, and a dinner in, in, in the uh, in 
the wine cellar. And we just, you know, we didn't want a big wedding, although uh, I did have a three layer <laughs> white fondant. <laughs> Which Tim rolled his eyes on. And um, he said no to the 100 white doves <laughs> going out of the church. So uh, I, just, I just say all that to uh, piggyback on all, all the remarks, uh, particularly Ryan, where you say, say he loved me. And as I said in my short remarks this morning, I, I loved him and I'm glad he picked me. And um, he was my life and I did everything for him. And I made a vow the other night that if we're either both dead or we're both alive, but going forward, everything I do, I will do in Tim's name. So if any, you, all, you guys are supposed to be getting the toast, so I'm just doing the filler here. But uh, uh, maybe, I'm like, maybe I'm like Ed McMahon to Johnny Carson. If anyone else wants to do a toast, fine. But if not, uh, Matt and Jordan would like to proceed with some, some music. Uh, a little a video that, that that Kathy and I have had the pleasure to put together. But but the, the reason we did that is because we have traveled so often together and I think Kathy is in the neighborhood of 40 plus videos that she's done for various things that we've done. She's just been the video person. And David, when you travel with David, you tend to get the download is in a file so large there's no computer except maybe maybe in some national database some thing that you could get it transferred to and down but to take those pictures and put them in here but over the last week 10 days we've had to sit together ourselves edit. and edit these pictures <laughs> and as hard as anything but Come up here and David want us to tell a little bit about maybe some of what these things are and when it's over with. But uh, go ahead. You, you, we're, there was a, the game that you guys the played. Game, as a result and I've asked some of you if Tim yes. played this game with you, where you get random text after no communication for a while and it has two names on it. <laughs> and then I'll go, Patty Lapone or Bette Midler. And I'll go, Patty Lapone. <laughs> And I'll send back Sean Connery or Cary Grant. And I'll go, oh, geez. oh wow. Cary Grant. <laughs> anyway, in this video, you will see a lot of pictures of Tim, business class, international champagne in hand. For every picture you see, there were 10 more exactly like it that didn't make it. <laughs> now, if we are ever lucky enough, again, to travel, business class, international, mm -hmm. and we get our champagne, we're going to raise a glass, and what are we going to say? Cheers, bitches! <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. Um, I'm not sure how, what year we started that, but Tim and I, when about 6 o'clock, 6.30, pour a glass of wine in the, in the kitchen or in the den, and the cheer was always, cheers, bitches! <laughs> and uh, we thought it was kind of funny, and Sometimes somebody would hear that and would be a little offensive, and we would say, "Oh, don't don't go too deep into all that." <laughs> and so that was our little thing, and of course we shared it with with uh, Kathy and, and Ron and and others that, uh, that you know cheered on with us easily. So that was a little that's a, just a little Timmy thing. Um, uh, in the last couple of weeks. Tim had not been playing the piano. And uh, Matt and Jordan came in. I wanted to show them the posters that were lined up in the living room. And I didn't realize that Jordan can play the piano. And he went over to the piano and sat down while Matt and I were talking. And he started to play Nimrod. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that Nimrod was on the, the it was the, the music book on the stand was open to and it will stay open to Nimrod until dust collects on it. Matt and I were at, uh, at Tim Goop's house this past Thursday evening, and um, unfortunately, you know, it was the first time that we've seen Goop since early mid March. Um, we were expecting to go to Chile as a group for a nice week, um, and 
that all got canceled when the pandemic hit. So it was nice to see Cube on Thursday evening, and we were having drinks in the patio. And at some point, you know, a bottle or two in, I had to go to the bathroom. So I stumbled into the living room, and I was looking at the photos. I was by myself at this point. Um, I didn't have the context about Nimrod um, going into the living room. And so just like the first time I met him, uh, I, when I walked into their house in 2015, when I started doing that, I sat at the piano. I was wowed by how beautiful it was and started playing it. Tim walked in and his eyes perked up because, whoa, you can play piano too. So we just, that's how we met. That's Sitting tribute to an extraordinary man who would have, I know, had played this and loved it and would have continued to enjoy it. So the next few songs that I'm going to play, I'm going to put the music down a little bit so people can still be able to socialize and speak amongst themselves. Um, the next one is, I was going to do the hymn of Jupiter, but I decided to do the whole orchestration of Jupiter. It's from Kust, it's from Gustav Holst. Um, him and I actually went back and forth with this song because I think it's one of the greatest pieces. And Tim says the greatest part of it is just the middle part, which is the hymn to Jupiter. So, such an interesting thing. Um, that part is, again, uh, the, the planets is a huge, um, huge thing that is the, the nine planets, at least back then there was nine planets. I don't know how many planets there are now, with Pluto not being a thing anymore. Um, and so, Jupiter is based off of the bringer of loyalty. Happiness, fun, loads of charisma. He was the god of the thunderbolt, the god of everything, right? And so, um, it's kind of is a little bit like him. Um, everything, truly everything. The bringer of joy. Every time we knew that Tim was going to be at an event or we would see Tim, it was always like, well, we always know there's going to be a great conversation. He's always going to ask us about ourselves and what we're doing in life and he's been so supportive of both of us throughout the five years that we've been a couple and so i'm going to play that and then it's Havon, a beautiful piece um not by Ravel, but his but actually his um his mentor horror maybe that's the correct pronunciation <laughs> Chris, you would probably know a lot better than me. Sure. Okay. Um, and then a beautiful rock Mamanov piece. Um, I believe it's Concerto Number Two, because why wouldn't you play that? It's one of the most beautiful pieces of all time. And I'm not even a rock Mamanov like fan. So, from coming from me, I guess that shows truly it is amazing. Um, so. I hope you guys enjoy the music. Again, this is just a small amount of classical music that um, I knew that Tim would love. So. Could I just add something briefly? Of course, the yeah, actual yeah. expert. Yeah. 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 I get his greatest love, the Nimrod and the, the, the Jupiter from Gustav Holtz. And I say this because he played both with us uh, just this last season. We started the season with the Enigma Variations and Tim was playing. Um, and not every string player plays in every concert we have, so I'm so grateful, actually. So glad that he managed to play that. And also he played in the Holst last season. Um, I'd just like to add something uh, Anne said. You know, She said perfectly that I can't think of anything about this guy I don't like. And that's coming from a conductor. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to say, I'm not sure it's the appropriate place to say, but I want to say it anyway. Um, we actually, in this time where we're not doing concerts, we're putting up some of our archival concerts of the FSO on our website. <clears throat> and in fact, the Nimrod, as I said, we just did. And I think it's actually up on the website. I'm not quite sure. Um, if you want to check it out, much better performance than that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I will make sure now that uh, it'll be clear that it's in uh, tribute to Tim himself. And also, we are 
the program is not actually ready yet, but uh, a, a, a group of the musicians you knew him really well, we're good, and myself are going to get together uh, sometime when we can in the next few weeks, I hope, to put together uh, a few pieces, other pieces that he loved uh, as a tribute to him as well. And we will hopefully either live stream it or put it up, uh, have it recorded and put it up on the website. So I'm not plucking the symphony. I just want to say that, uh, you know, given all this, uh, you can hear music that he loves through through the FSO as well. Thanks. Thank you. Sam, when you talk about the different trips, but um, the Fairfax Symphony for years would do a summer program in the Shenandoah Valley at Orkney Springs. And it was a music festival, and, um, and there was a... Uh, all these cottages, very modest cottages, very nice, un unair conditioned, and all the musicians would would go up there. And uh, did you? Did, I don't know if you all went up and, and it, they went up before the nights of the performances. I don't know if they went up the nights before the performances to rehearse, but they played softball and they they hung out on the on the porch of the cottages and. Uh, Climbed the mountain. And then climb the mountains and remember. I, and I didn't go. These were all the musicians. I did go a couple years. We went to an old cemetery, and, and we walked through the cemetery, and uh, and and I was there in the cottage where we just all drank and drank and drank. Uh, Greg and Ann were not married at that time. I don't think anyone in, in the group really was married. It was a very young group, and then uh, then marriages come along the way children come along the way and before all that though what we also did was an art after the Fairfax Symphony concert in, in Fairfax all the musicians would get together at a restaurant a very nice restaurant called Artie's and um, Chris now that Chris is the new I say he's the new new conductor he's been there for a while but he comes and if there's a solo performance performer they come and so forth and so forth but because up people started to get married and children, the crowd dwindled down to where it was Tim and I, always Tim Wade, but just just the last the last one or two performances, Greg and Ann showed up and was there, and I thank you for being there. And uh, those were wonderful times at Orkney Springs. I wish I had shared more in those with y'all. <laughs>